This is a mini lesson on Newton's laws, in particular, Newton's first law. Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia. And it's something that you're probably familiar with, at least a little bit from uh, elementary school, uh, in that form, the law of inertia. Uh, it says that an object will at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion with the same speed and direction unless it's acted on by an outside force. So let's uh, let's write that out and look at each term. So first, uh, an object at rest. stays at rest okay. unless acted on by a net outside force. Well, a force in physics is just a push or a pull, so it actually has a very similar definition to the definition that we use uh, in everyday language. Uh, so that we don't really need uh, to talk about much. Uh, an object at rest staying at rest, uh, everybody is familiar with that. Uh, it's not hard to believe, nobody has trouble understanding that if there's a rock sitting there on the ground then that rock is not just going to spontaneously start moving by itself. Right? You know that if the rock is moving, then, uh, then uh, or if the rock starts moving, then something must have provided a force uh, on that rock. So the first part of this is easy to understand, but let's talk about what do we mean by net and what do we mean by outside. Okay, uh, net is another word for same total. So if you add up all of the different forces on the object, that's the total force on the object, or the net force on the object. And uh, using that word net is important in Newton's first law, because just because this rock is sitting there and it's not moving, it doesn't mean that there are no forces at all on the rock. Uh, for example, gravity is pulling the rock down, uh, and the ground is pushing the rock up. That's why the rock doesn't fall down. So uh, it's not true to say that there are no forces at all acting on the rock, but it is true to say that there's no net force on the rock because the force of gravity down and the force of the Earth up cancel each other out so that the total force or the net force on the rock is equal to zero because force is a vector. Its direction matters. Okay. So that's what we mean by net. There has to be some force on an object that is not canceled out. Uh, what do we mean by outside force? Well, or another way of saying that would be external. So there has to be some force on the object that uh, is from outside the object. The, uh, for example, when we're trying to decide whether or not this rock is going to start moving, we don't have to worry about the chemical forces that are inside the rock, you know, holding the rock itself together. Uh, or, you know, if there is a person uh, it's actually not possible to push yourself uh, in the sense that, you know, if I take my hand and I attempt to push my side sideways, then I'm not going to go anywhere because I'm exerting a force on myself. That's not an outside force. So uh, that's what those two words mean, net and outside force. Uh, okay, well, how about the second part of Newton's first law? first part is an object at rest will stay at rest unless there's a net outside force on it. The second part says that an object in motion 
motion. Stays in motion. Uh, at the same velocity. And remember, velocity includes both speed and direction. An object in motion will stay in motion with the same velocity unless it's acted on by a net outside force. Uh, this one is not quite as intuitive uh, as the first part of the law, because after all, uh, this rock, I mean, we all agree that the rock's not going to move unless somebody exerts a force on it. But uh, if I were to say kick the rock, then when I exert a force on it, it would start moving and, you know, the rock might uh, go over here somewhere, but eventually it would stop. So you might think at first, well, I kick the rock and it starts moving, but because I'm not continuously kicking the rock, the rock stops. So you might think that it takes a force in order to keep an object moving. Uh, and in fact, that's what Aristotle thought a couple thousand years ago, uh, was that it took a force to keep an object moving. Uh, but that's not what Newton's first law says. Newton's first law says that it will stay moving in the same direction, at the same velocity, same speed, unless an outside force acts on it. So, how about that rock? Why does it stop? Well, it doesn't stop because I quit kicking it. It stops because friction between the rock and the ground slows it down. So, in this case, the outside force that stops that rock from moving after I kick it is friction. And Newton realized, you know, he sort of was able to imagine, if I kick this rock over the surface of an icy pond, then the rock's going to go much further because there's a lot less friction. And he was even able to imagine, well, what if I had this you know, ideal frozen pond where there was no friction whatsoever? Then he realized that the rock would continue to move forever, you know, at least until it got to the edge of the pond, when the edge of the pond would exert an outside force on it. So, uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but it, uh, we now realize that this is true, that unless an, a force acts on an object, it will continue moving with the same speed in the same direction that it was always moving in. So, here's uh, one of these check yourself questions. I'm going to clear the board, so pause if you're still taking notes. Okay, here's one of the check yourself questions. So we have uh, this rocket ship that is moving forward at some constant speed v. Okay, when uh, the rocket runs out of fuel and the engines turn off. So the rocket engines suddenly turn off because it runs out of gas. Okay, and we'll say that this spaceship is uh, out in empty space. So there are no planets nearby or anything like that. So the rocket engines suddenly turn off. What happens to the speed of this rocket? Do you think that it stops immediately? Do you think that it uh, uh, gradually slows to a stop? Do you think that it 
slows, but doesn't stop. Or do you think that it uh, keeps going at the same speed? Pause the video long enough for you to think about this question and uh, come up with your answer. And when you're ready to see what the correct answer is and hear the explanation, uh, restart the lesson. Ready? The correct answer is D. Uh, according to Newton's first law, Unless an outside force is acting on that rocket, it will continue moving at the same speed in the same direction that it was always moving. So when the rocket engines turn off, because it's in empty space and there's nothing out in empty space to exert an external force on it, no gravity or anything like air resistance, nothing like that, so there are no external forces on that rocket when the engines turn off. Therefore, it will continue going at a constant speed. Now, if it was uh, on Earth, then there would probably be air resistance or gravity or something that would keep it from uh, moving at the same speed. But in empty space, nothing. So it will continue going at the same speed. That means that in a lot of movies, uh, if somebody runs out of gas then and they get stranded, uh, that often is not realistic because uh, if they just knew Newton's first law, then all you have to do is, if you realize you're about to run out of gas, just make sure you're pointed in the right direction when you run out of gas, and you'll keep going uh, after you run out of gas. And you'll just uh, keep going at the same speed until you get where you need to go. So you might not get there faster, but you won't be stuck in the same spot forever. Okay, let's do another uh, one of these check yourself questions. Uh, this one is going to take place on a bus. So on this bus, uh, we have a bus going at 40 miles per hour. And it's a crowded bus, so you have to stand up. Uh, and the uh, the bus driver suddenly applies the brakes. So the bus slows down. It's not going 40 miles an hour anymore. And when that happens, of course, you're going to move forward toward the front of the bus. question is why. So is it because there was a net forward force on you is it because there was no net forward force on you Actually, you can just say no uh, net force on you. You don't really need the word forward there. Uh, or is it because there was a net uh, downward force on you? So once again, pause until while you think about the answer. Uh, these help you more if you kind of commit yourself to an answer and you know work out why you think it's true on your own before you hear the correct answer. OK, uh, if you're ready for the correct answer, the correct answer is B. There was no net force on you. Uh, the reason that the bus slowed down is because there was a net force on the bus. 
Right? There was a net backward force on the bus, so that means that the bus is not going to go 40 miles an hour anymore. It slows down. However, because you know, you're not attached to the bus, so there is no net force on you that's slowing you down, you continue moving forward at the same speed and velocity that you were moving before, which is 40 miles an hour forward. So you're going to stumble forward until there's a net force on you that slows you down. Um, if you're lucky, then that net force will be uh, you grabbing a hold of somebody else's seat or the handrails. If you're not lucky, then that force will be the windshield of the bus. Uh, but in either case, Newton's law says you will continue going 40 miles an hour forward until a net force acts on you. So uh, the correct answer is B. All right, this ends the mini lesson on Newton's first law, but stay tuned for the mini lesson on Newton's second law. The Newton's second law lesson will be in a separate file.